Herculean efforts by scientists and physicians around the world have resulted in more than 50 experimental COVID vaccines currently in global clinical trials. The focus in the U.S. thus far has been on the big four, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson. On December 8th, images of people in the U.K. receiving Pfizer's vaccine, the first clinically authorized, fully tested COVID vaccine, were broadcast around the world to much celebration. Three days later, the Food and Drug Administration granted Pfizer emergency use authorization for its vaccine in the U.S. And now Americans are getting vaccinated. And on Thursday, the FDA will consider Moderna's vaccine for emergency use. If granted, the first doses could be administered by Christmas. This is historic. This is an historic moment in the history of public health. It's an historic moment in the history of medicine. Hopes have been high for AstraZeneca's vaccine, which is less expensive and easier to store than Pfizer and Moderna's mRNA vaccines, which require special freezers. But several communication missteps surrounding AstraZeneca's safety and efficacy data have reportedly damaged relationships with U.S. federal regulators. Trials, though, are ongoing in San Francisco and Oakland. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is also very promising. It's unique in that it's just one dose for adults. Like AstraZeneca, it's easy to store and inexpensive. Expensive. Johnson & Johnson is wrapping up global phase three trials, including at Stanford and the VA in San Francisco. UCSF epidemiologist Dr. George Rutherford expects promising efficacy data from Johnson & Johnson early next year. The good news from Johnson & Johnson is that they've just decreased the size of their trial from 60,000 people to 40,000 people. You don't do that unless you're expecting a large effect. Pfizer and Moderna are both about 95% effective. AstraZeneca's efficacy varies depending on dosage, but overall data show it's 70% effective. UCSF infectious disease specialist Dr. Peter Chinghong points out the FDA's original COVID vaccine approval bar was 50% effectiveness. So these are amazing vaccines. You not only Pass the test, you got like an A++++. For context, according to the CDC, the measles vaccine and gold standard is 97% effective after two doses. Flu vaccine efficacy varies season to season, but on average over the past 10 years in the U.S., flu vaccines have been about 44% effective. Right now, 60% of Americans say they will get the vaccine but we need it to be 70% and over, and hopefully that number will increase. Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca all require two doses. Pfizer is 52% effective after the first dose. You have to get the second booster to achieve near full protection. Why is it so critical that people actually follow through three to four weeks later with their second dose? The first reason is that if you have low levels of protection, there is a theoretical risk of getting resistance in the entire population of COVID. The second reason, you may get a response after the first dose, but we don't know how long or how durable that response is. The second dose is kind of like an insurance policy that you'll be protected for multiple years. It only took two months to develop a vaccine and get it into clinical trials. That's unheard of. Dr. Susan Buckminder is an epidemiologist with San Francisco's Department of Public Health and principal investigator for San Francisco's phase three AstraZeneca trial. There aren't any shortcuts. The reason that it was so quick is that the technology for making these vaccines was already available because it was being used to create vaccines against other infectious diseases. There's also overlap between the different trial phases, which compresses the timeline. And at financial risk, biotech companies and governments manufactured and bought vaccine product before knowing if it all actually worked. So that if a vaccine is found to be effective, you can actually roll it out immediately. Normally, you wait until after you show that it's effective then you apply to FDA for licensure, and only then do you start manufacturing the vaccine. Because it costs a lot of money to make this yeah. stuff. It does cost a lot of money to make this stuff. Around the world, China has five vaccine candidates that have reached phase three trials and are expected to ship globally. Their Sinopharm vaccine is reportedly 86% effective. Russia, which approved the first COVID vaccine Sputnik V in August, is now reportedly struggling to manufacture the two-shot vaccine.